Oh, hey guys, how you doing? Um, yeah, I'm tired. Shows, I'm tired. I'm really, really tired. I've had a long day. Um, I just ran in and I caught, I caught part of Kamala's life. Um, and normally she's in tune. Normally she knows what she's saying. But um, I'm going to talk a bit of um, business today. I feel very, very lucky. You know, I can be a very harsh critic of Sweden. Hey, Desha, Desha, you recognize this? Do you recognize this, Desha? I can be a very harsh crit critic of Sweden, but when it comes to being a small business owner, I cannot, I cannot fault Sweden. You know, a year ago, um, when we decided, um, when we decided that we were going to take the company to the next level, as I always talk about my chamber of commerce, my city council, my um, commune parish council, that I've gotten so many help, I've gotten so many help from them. Yeah, is it is it this your headpiece? Did um. Um, Desha, I know you're tired this because it's not mine, and if it's not yours, it's my mother's. Yeah, so, um, as I was saying, when it comes to being a small business owner, I cannot fault Sweden, they do absolutely everything, they do absolutely everything for you. To succeed today I had one of those meetings and from time to time when I look back when I look back on the journey and how I had picked up myself and moved to Jamaica with my children. And less than two years later, I had to move back to Sweden because I didn't feel as if I was fitting in. It was too many red tapes, too many running around. I had the wrong, I had the right surname for Jamaica, <laughs> but I had the wrong color for doing business in Jamaica. And having not lived in Jamaica for two decades, I just could not deal with the bureaucracy. Um, it was too much. It was too much for me. And I stopped being sad about it. I accepted it because when I look at where, when I look at where Zevin Naturals is today, and when I look at the meeting I had today, and if I know Jamaica is a poor country, However, if we take just one example of what happened has happened to me today and apply it to Jamaican owned businesses where the money stays in Jamaica and doesn't go off to China or Switzerland or the Cayman Islands or St. Lucia, Jamaicans love to hide the money in St. Lucia these days. Yeah? You know, today I had a meeting with the first people who financed me and basically they sent a letter to say it was a year ago we helped you out i want to see where you are now and how we can help you further yeah and <laughs> i went on the meeting um they had already checked the website they already checked um you know, your, your accounting information when you have a company in Sweden is public information. They had already checked all of that. And they were like, hi, Josette. They were like, um, how can we help you to grow more? How can we help you? Because we see that you're doing the right thing. And because the U.S. is our biggest market still, they... Um, we're like, why don't you do this to take more market share in the United States? Um, I have a meeting on Thursday um, that my 
city council, my chamber of commerce, whatever you call it in English, had set up for me just to focus on marketing in Scandinavia. And I almost cried today because I was like, for all intended purposes, I am a foreigner in Sweden. And yeah, we make good products. And yeah, I had a very solid business plan. Otherwise, I would have never financed it. <laughs> However, for these people, 12 months later, to remember and actually did the homework, went through the website, went through the accounting of the company, and um, to come and say, okay, so book their time, sit with us, and to say, is there, hi, Faith, is there anything else we can help you with to make you more successful? You're on the right path. Um, it seems as if the things that we have written down when we checked your business a week ago, you have now implemented those things, which was basically having the website in Swedish, having the... Um, having the currency exchange. Um, and I was like, if in, I pay a lot of taxes in Sweden. So this is where I pay my taxes. This is where I have my vote. But I was looking at it and I said, even though Jamaica does not have the financial economic resources, has Sweden have to foster small businesses? They do have the intellect and they do have the human resources to motivate and mentor small business owners. Um, and if they take a page out of that book of mentoring a business, I'll tell you this. When I started out a year ago, I was just an entrepreneur. I wasn't a business person. I just knew how to make money. Making money and keeping money is two different things. And then I had this whole idea that I was going to save the world and I was going to use the company to, to um, help other women. I, I'm not um, to help other women. And somewhere along the way, I have gotten mentors. I've gotten people that come at 300 pounds an hour that I didn't have to pay for myself. Um, I've gotten so much and the fostering and the, the reassurance from these people to say that, you know, I don't know how you come up on this idea, but you are filling a void in the market. And for people to come now and say, yeah, when we see that you're doing well in North America, but the void is here in Scandinavia. Scandinavia do um there is there are no skincare products for black people in Scandinavia. They didn't say it like that, but that's exactly what they meant. Yeah, so you need you need to get yours. You need to put yourself on the Scandinavian market, not just the UK. You need to put yourself in Finland, in Denmark, in Iceland, in in Sweden. You need to put yourself on the Scandinavian market. What can we do to help you do that? How do you want to do that? How do Scandinavians shop? Do they walk in a store or do they shop online? Scandinavians shop online. Um, that, hi Eva, Eva, how are you? That alone for somebody to come and say, look, you are doing something. And I am very much Swedish in my ways, but I am always Jamaican. And it, it made me think for a while that this is the same person that the custom officer referred to as the homeless looking dried girl over there. So that was a statement that made me leave Jamaica actually in 2018. Um, and for now, the people in the adopted country is saying, what can we do? I said, and it has been, it has been an amazing, 
it has been an amazing journey it feels good when I'm here in Sweden but it feels good when you see someone that works in the business in <laughs> thank you Kai that's somebody that works in the business in another Scandinavian country and they will say girl you know I thought because that was an issue a lot of people thought that the company Zeva Naturals was based in the US and if it is based in the US no tell people Scandinavian people tend not to buy the product because you have to pay the import duty of about 25 percent plus what amounts to ten dollars then 25 percent and that was an effort to stop people from buying from china but then it affects everybody now that people are finding and realizing that zeva naturals is actually based here in sweden it is a whole different ball game have seen the swedish orders just start to plummet and it's not just dark people it's just start to go up i mean but it feels good when a government agency in a country that i was not born and a country that i criticized so harshly for their race relations it feels good to know that somebody out there is seeing what we are doing and realize that we're filling a void it feels very good and that is why i have I have forgiven Jamaica for not loving me. <laughs> I can't force them to love me. I don't have to love them either, but, but I love them. I don't, just, I don't have to like them, but I love Jamaica. I'm always going to be that girl from, from St. Thomas, Jamaica. Yeah? Now, I cannot reinforce and reiterate enough the importance of the footprints we leave on social media. I cannot. It was on social media on my other page that the general manager of a hotel spotted my live talking about presenting the products as formulated for people with pig I'm saying pigmented because I was speaking Swedish all day formulated for people with melanin when we were invited to participate in their program at the hotel it was on social media that I met a guru in the skincare industry one of the big names as I as I related the story I did not even believe it was real I thought someone was messing with me, but it was real. And it was on social media that I met the, the, um, the founder of the company that I am now making the onion oil for um, to be sold under their brand, which is a brand that is probably 70 times bigger than mine. And I've been around a lot, lot longer, years. So you might not be in sales or product or whatever, but the lesson is we have to be mindful of our social media behavior because we are judged based on the footprints we leave there. It was on social media, a person that works in Sephora found me and said, why don't you try getting your products in Sephora because there are no products for dark skinned people here. Didn't have the interest to do that because I was not going to build a bigger company where I build in myself. Um, but I am forever grateful. Today is a day that I will not criticize Sweden in a negative way. <laughs> I cannot criticize Sweden today, um, but I hope that in my lifetime, the country that I was born in, the country that I love so dearly, will give the same form of mentorship to 
business owners and they they must they they do not necessarily have to be Jamaicans but Jamaicans need to understand that whether you're abroad or you're in Jamaica you should spend your money where the money is channeled back to Jamaica because it is the money that is channeled back into Jamaica or the money that stays in Jamaica that will give you the opportunity to not have to wait 10 days in a wheelchair in the hospital because it is the money that the government collects, no matter what color the government is. That's what pays for the infrastructure. And if you spend your money in a company, in a business, or with people that the money goes outside of Jamaica, then you're not helping to build your country. Okay, one might say, what happened if you spend it with an overseas Jamaican? Most overseas Jamaican, Jamaica is like most other third world country. A large portion of the foreign exchange earned in the country is through Hold on. Right. One second, people. Over. Yeah, sorry, I'm back. Like a lot of third world countries, a large percentage of the Jamaican GDP is through remittances. You and I know that there are more Jamaicans living outside of Jamaica, approximately 3 million, than the 2 point something that lives inside Jamaica. Thank you, Sarah. So when you spend your money with Jamaicans that are living abroad, doesn't have to be me, the Jamaican corner shop, Oh, I'm going to look at it when I'm finished because when you spend your money with Jamaican businesses abroad, it doesn't matter how long they live there. 10 chances to one, 90% of the time, they are sending remittances to their family and friends in Jamaica. They're going on vacation. Jamaicans, Jamaicans love to go on vacation in Jamaica, you know. These are one of the few people who don't like to explore other people's country. Jamaicans love Jamaica. So if you spend your money directly or indirectly in the Jamaican community, the Jamaican diaspora, the diaspora, then you are helping to build your country. On the other hand, if you go and spend it with these multinationals who barely pay their workers minimum wage and the bulk of their money is exported to the Cayman Islands, to St. Lucia, Switzerland, Shanghai, Beijing, wherever, how is that benefiting you? Then you don't earn the right and you don't have the right to complain about the, the roads or the hospitals. Okay, thanks, Amdeb. You don't... Um, you cannot complain about things you're not helping to build. You can't. And did you know, I'll tell you something I learned in the afterhand. When I went to Jamaica and set up, um, when I went to Jamaica and I set up, set up shop there, 2017, I used my Jamaican passport. I got a Jamaican passport. I didn't have a Jamaican passport for years. And I got a Jamaican passport specifically in order to set up business in Jamaica. And then I learned that was the wrong thing I did. Because had I gone to Jamaica and set up business as a Swedish citizen, not owning Jamaican passport, not claiming my Jamaican citizenship, I would be able to operate for five years tax free and when 
I became enlightened with that knowledge is when I started being anti-Chinese business because I realized something. I missed the boat, yeah, because I didn't know the lack of knowledge. Yes, Sarah, that is so true because I remember like um, sometime last year when I was aiming low and I contacted the biggest Afro shops in Sweden and all they were telling me about samples, samples, samples. And then I contacted a large um, non-Afro shop in the UK and all they asked me for was my safety assessment, no samples. To this day, my products are not in a black shop in Sweden and I will not put them in an Afro shop in Sweden. I will never do it. Because Africans in Sweden do not like to support people that look like them. I don't know. And it's the same thing. It's, I don't think it's just Africans. It's the same thing. I've never had a Jamaican, minus two, I've never had a Jamaican customer in Sweden. And every Jamaican in Sweden know who I am. Because many of them, I help them to start school. I help them house them when them and them man broke up and... <laughs> but that is life. The people don't like to see um, others grow. We, we, it is in our... Yeah, it is, um, it is so... Um, I don't know. So I just say, you know what? It is not my... It is not my job to unlearn what you have learned in the last 400 years. I'm just going to do me. I have very good support from ethnic Swedes. I have very good support from South Americans living in Sweden and from the Asians in Sweden, especially the Vietnamese. Um, and I have very good support from the Gambians. I will not lie. I have very, very good support from the Gambians in Sweden, the Ghanaians, the few South Africans. But my Jamaican people, it's like they're decided to think that I'm going to own Jamaica if they spend a hundred kroners with me. Um, but anyhow, back to what I was saying. So what I learned is that, and that why I became so anti-Chinese, it had nothing to do with xenophobia. It has nothing to do with racism. It has to do with pure economics. If you're going to give, if you're going to give Foreigners, tax breaks, as Jamaica does, five years in order to set up business. For one, it must be a business that provides employment for those who are far from the employment market. For two, it must be a business that ordinary Jamaicans do not have the resources to set up. How dare you give these Chinese five-year tax breaks to set up supermarkets and run the Jamaican-owned supermarket out of business? That is why I became anti-Chinese. That is why I became anti-Chinese when it comes to business in Jamaica. Because I don't see how Jamaica benefits from them having supermarkets there. Um, and selling fake stuff. I have been to China and see them change packages, packaging. When you tell them that, oh, but the package, because you know that certain products, yeah? One second, one second. What happened? What happened to you? Where, where were you hiding? We sleeping. Mm? What were you still? We sleeping. He hit you? Go and hit him back. Close the door and go and hit him back. Hard. Yeah, hit him back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So, I see the I I will um I don't know, but those of you who travel, you will notice that. Let me take a product that is very popular. People who perm the hair. Or ice cream. The labeling for it is different in North America than the European labeling. And in China, they know this. In Guangzhou, China, where they make those fake ones, they know this. So when you're black, they automatically assume that you're buying 
from um from Africa. And so they give you the African label, which is similar to the one that is in North America with the girl, um, the girl. But then when you say, Oh, um, I'm buying for Paris, because I, I, I it was a French girl that I was watching. When you say that I'm buying for Paris, all they do, they go in the back and they change the, they change the box. It's the same thing they do with the things they sell in the supermarket. You think those things are made in Trinidad when they're about them Shirley Biscuit or whatever? No. And I do not see why. And I always say this. If something is being imported in a country and it is cheaper than the product that is produced in the country, something is wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that Come, come and sit up on Mama's bed. You like your Mac? Your coffee? You mean to the top come to me? Eh? Don't bother when they lick your mess when they lick your cough them back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make them ball too. Sorry. My granny raised me. Um yeah so, so that is the that is part of the issue i have um because it's the same thing you know um and then they run they run the local businesses the same people that we pay tax at jamaica you know, because remember you know these chinese not pay no tax down there you know because what they do you notice sir, they change owners every five years as soon as it's the same family you know but as soon as the tax-free program as soon as the tax free as soon as they're supposed to start paying taxes in jamaica what do you think happen they leave and another said come and take up residency and act as if they probably change the name or they change the owner or they change something and they never ever contribute to the development of the country they never you lick them run come now yes yes Mom. that's the mama boy don't ball when nobody lick you fight back yeah? Yes, see him so. Mama, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, yeah. So we cannot, and people say, "Oh, it's economics, economics, and seven. Yeah, men do all of a store, mama, no. I'm coming, people. So, mama, proud to her. Can do go send a door eh? go visit go visit the father papa. Seven, go visit the papa. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, and that is why I say don't support them. Don't buy anything there. Don't do not support them, because we like to tend to blame. We tend to blame the government and say, oh, the government let the Chinese in. No. It's not the government who let them in. Globalization does. And um, when you borrow money from the IMF, they basically dictate that you should have um, open market access. When you borrow loans from the Chinese, they expect that you're going to open up your market to their people. I don't know how many of you on this live watched the live I did from rural China, where it basically looked like downtown kids done before it was... Um, before downtown Kinson was developed and when you go there these are the people that come to the caribbean <laughs> these are the people that come to jamaica and that is why and when they come to our country and because we have not unlearned that because that um we're we ought to be proud of ourselves then we start we worship them and we give them that power to treat us like shit you cannot support an economic model. You cannot support businesses that runs the local businesses out of out of um, out of business. When you buy in those Chinese supermarket, their second and third grade products, fake products, you are creating a generation of criminals in Jamaica because you are stopping the corner shop owner the neighborhood shopkeeper from being able to provide for her or his children and those children are going to grow up to be criminals because poverty breeds crime 
Crime is a byproduct of poverty. In developed countries where there is a social network, social services, whatever you call it, welfare, to catch those who live on the fringe of society, you have less crime. It is right there. Poverty breeds criminals. You support the Chinese, you are supporting the crime in Jamaica. Simple as that. Because you are running a Jamaican out of business. You don't spend your money with Jamaicans. You are supporting the criminal system in Jamaica because you are preventing us from remittancing money home. Yeah, and the new hotels too. They are Spanish owned. I mean, and I'm looking at this. Spain is, has been going through an economic crisis for the last 12 years. So how is it that they're investing there? How is it more lucrative for Spanish companies to be investing Spain that has been going through a recession for the last 12 years, since 2008, since Iceland made the world collapse then? Spain has been going through a recession, but since 2008, all the hotels, most hotels in Jamaica are built by the Spanish. Why is it more lucrative for the Spanish people, for the Spanish hoteliers to invest in Jamaica, a third world country, than to invest in Spain, which is for all intended purposes, also a third world country? It's the same thing when I said to people, you know. Stop at stop at stop acting fancy. Go down at the market and buy your onions. Them is it Mexico? Why did I think it was Spain, Deb? Thank you. Knowledge is power. You see, don't always know everything. My cousin say I'm Mexico. She's still out of Jamaica, so she must know. Yeah. The the other thing, you know. <laughs> I was surprised when I was in Jamaica making the onion oil. I used to travel from Mandeville. I was living in Mandeville. So I used to travel from Mandeville to St. Elizabeth. And I used to be in... I used to go into the fields in Mandeville, in St. Elizabeth to get onions. And then the farmers would complain. And then you would see the trucks come in Santa Cruz on a Wednesday. And the onions, the imported third grade onions were cheaper than the onions being grown in Jamaica. Onions that the U.S. does not want. It's not fit for consumption. I'll give you another, I'll give you another example. There's a country in Africa, um, Togo. Togo? Yeah, I think it's Togo. Togo or Niger, one of those French-speaking countries. Not Nigeria, Niger. Niger, sorry. I'm saying Niger in Swedish, sorry. Niger. The chicken that France does not sell to its people is not fit to make animal food that is the chicken that they export to this country in africa a former french colony listen me now the a grade chicken is sold for human consumption the b grade chicken is sold to make animal food the C-grade chicken is exported to Africa. And what does that do? It kills the African poultry industry because this third-rated C-grade chicken that is not fit to feed animals in France is being sold to feed humans in Africa, destroying the African poultry industry. It was only yesterday... I saw a documentary that the German um, Deutsche Welle, the German documentary channel had about the production of tomatoes in Ghana. Ghana used to have the big production um, tomato industry in Africa. Ghana was tomato. They farmed it, they produced it, they exported it. It was their industry. It, it contributed, I don't remember how many percent of the Ghanaian GDP to made to farming and processing. You know what happened? These Italian and Spanish based, and this is how the capitalists get us black people, you know. 
Because they don't do it to anybody else. They don't. They're not even allowed to do it in Europe to the poor Moldovians. But they do it to us black people. There is not one tomato processing uh, plant left in Ghana. Because they import the, uh, Italy and Spain are responsible for this. Which means it is the European Union which is responsible for this. What they do, they started selling processed tomatoes in Ghana at half the price of the Ghanaian tomatoes and ran the companies out of business, the tomato farms out of business. And how do they want to compensate the Ghanaian farmers? They have them working as farm workers in, the, in Italy and Spain. Seasonal farm workers, just as all the Jamaicans go to Canada to pick apple. That is why I'm also against farm work. I'm against everything that keeps the black person down. Everything. And people are saying that Shanafi, you're turning into a radical. No, I am not turning into a radical. But I am more informed of how the system is, of the institutionalized economic starvation of people that looks like me. And how, this is another thing they're doing in South America and in Kenya. You know that Africans, Africans love to work hard to eat their food. <laughs> you know, while we Jamaicans, we peel the yam, we cook it, and then we eat it. No, man, Africans love to work hard for their food. They cook the yam and then they pound it and then they make their, their um, ayah or they make their fufu or they make whatever. It's the same thing with the chocolate. They pick the chocolate just like how we do a Jamaica, we grate it. Nestles started advertising packaged chocolates, packaged noodles, rami, rami noodles, I think I see everybody in Jamaica eating for breakfast. Because this is how the European capitalists think. As long Africa is the region in the world that has the least reported cases of cancer, have the least amount of obese people, minus Asia, of course, And all the lifestyle diseases we get when we migrate. So the capitalists realize that as long as Africans were living off the land, just like all they did to Jamaica and when they tell us that when the EU told us that they no longer wanted to buy our bananas and when the IMF told us that it was not sustainable for a country to live off agriculture, mm -hmm, while they pump millions and billions into Polish and French agriculture, but then they tell the Caribbean the same thing. Nestle, they start to tell the people that it is too much hard work to get their food for their um, benediction or whatever it was. It was too, many, too much hard work. So then they started to package. And the problem is that, they're, that they package the stuff. The problem is all the additives and preservatives that they add into it. Because this is all they think, you know, we, we have a na as a nation, we have not yet figured it out. But this is what they think. If we can't get you to buy our food, we will get you to buy our medicine. Because while you will go hungry and say, okay, tomorrow there is something we can eat. Hi, Jenny. As soon as you're ill, you turn to the doctor. And this is what they do. So now... In South America, in, um, before Venezuela collapsed, nobody ate plantains. Nobody grated their plantains and stuff anymore. In Kenya, um, they don't make this from the, um, what is it called? Sigum. Um, in South Africa, they no longer, hey Fatu, in South Africa, they no longer use um, Iwisia because they package the, the finished material packed with preservatives and, and sell to the African person. Just as though I go to Jamaica and I see people eating macaroni and cheese for breakfast and people eating ramen noodles, feeding ramen noodles or ramen noodles or whatever it is called to children when the rest of the world is saying to you that you are not allowed to give this to children. It is not good for you. And that is why they force third world countries 
to move away from self-sufficient agriculture so that you have to import their cancers in jars and in tins. But yet we don't learn. It is the same thing with the skincare industry. The same thing. Hey, Natalie, it is exactly the same thing. I will forever say it and people are going to say it's because you're in the industry. No, it is not because I'm in the industry. I'll give you another thing. Luckily, my child didn't eat baby food. But Nestle's has a brand of baby food in Sweden. The exact, it is called something else in Jamaica and it is called something else in Sweden. But it's the same brand made by Nestle's. The brand in Sweden you're not allowed to have preservatives. You're not allowed to have gluten. You're not allowed to have... so. And these things that you buy in the US and in Jamaica, it is full of them. As I always say to people, you know, I can speak skincare because that is my specialist area these days. Yeah? It is simple. In the United States, 140 products are banned. Um, agents are banned from use in skincare products. In Canada and the European Union, that's 1,400. The same thing they did with our food, and that is why you notice when I was growing up, if a young person died and the cause of death the, uh, door and talk and stop hitting your brother. Okay. Um, if the if the cause of death when I was growing up, and I'm forty one, if the cause of death was cancer in a young person and it wasn't leukemia because leukemia throughout the world is the most common cancer in children and three in sweden three out of four kids survive leukemia so it's not a deadly disease in that sense if a child died and it wasn't blood cancer in jamaica or a young person there was an uproar every now and then you get somebody dying from sickle cell when we stop eating our food that we plant and produce and started eating their imported food. Haven't you noticed in the last two decades, it is completely normal that a person in their 20s, 30s, teenagers are dying of cancer. Ovarian and breast cancer is on the rise in third world countries. To my area, it is the exception to the rules when a melanated person gets skin cancer. It happens, but it is not supposed to happen. When we moved away, from using our cactuses or what you call them, or aloe vera, or um, prickly pear. When we moved away from using our own herbs and botanicals on our skin, and we started because we feel that it is a it is a status call to use these high end chemical lace cosmetics. We started getting issues. That people that are rich, by cause pure love to you, sweetheart. Um, that we started getting issues that should be foreign to people with melanin. When I was growing up, when I was younger, eczema wasn't a black person thing. Eczema, eczema is so common nowadays. Eczema was not a black person thing. Hi, good body, Petrina. Or remember, I call it Petrina. Petrina. Eczema was not a black person thing. It was uncommon. Not when you live in the tropics. Not when you live in Africa. You would probably get it and we return to our 
gardens and it is solved and it is kept under control. Every other black person these days, every other, and when I say our melanated person, so I can bring in, so I can bring in the Asians and the Hispanics and the, everybody else that has a little more than 1% in the body. Every other person is suffering from eczema or psoriasis or dermatitis. Okay, we used to have dry scalp and dandruff, but because we started using their luxury sulfate rich products in our hair, products that are not intended, you know, the African hair is not intended to be washed daily. No, Europeans wash their hair daily and nothing happens. Now they're learning that they should probably moisturize it more and wash it less, yeah? Because we use those products over time, because you're using it from the child is born. Over time, we strip away the natural oils from our skin. And the products that these multinationals market to people that look like you and I, that's what it does. It changes the makeup, the chemistry of your body. It strips away your body's natural oil. But we haven't learned. I don't know when we will learn. When you get, and I was on to it yesterday, so I won't step into it. When you get hyperpigmentation or when you get scars in your face and you turn to the big companies, the multinationals, for a product that will, most in most cases, you just want the spot gone, yeah? So you can go a day without makeup. They give you a product that completely changes what you look like, changes your complexion, changes everything. Okay, society have taught us that to be lighter is better. Nothing is wrong with that if you think you want to be lighter. But rather than offering you, and if Zevin Naturals are, is making products that evens out your complexion without bleaching you. It means that the multinationals have the know-how how to do it without arming your skin, without having you to become a patient or customer of theirs through their pharmaceutical branch. Why is it that they're giving us, marketing to us, products that five or 10 years from now is having us having cancer. How is it that you're using a product to even your skin tone and in the end result is that you have acne that you can't get rid of? How is it that you now have to go to a skin specialist to get rid of? Ask yourself that. Catch you guys later.